so if we can if we can just go back then to um, execution for a second. I mean, we've talked about innovation. You're passionate about innovation, um, and but. It's all about, as you know, it's all about execution. On Harvard Business Review, um, their website on hbr.org, Michael Jarrett, the INSEAD professor, obviously a smart guy, points out that over 70% of corporate strategic initiatives are never successfully implemented. And then uh, Larry Bosidy, the former uh, CEO of Allied Signal, he wrote a whole book on execution. Uh, and it's, it was, it's, it's quite unfortunate, but on the front cover of the book, it's just got the word execution. So if, you, if, you're, if you're reading that on the train, you can really scare some people. Um, but, but it says in there, and he says that strategies most often fail because they aren't well executed. It's all about execution. So we've talked about innovation. What tips can you share on how to outperform the competition by the good old results and delivering on what you need to do? So I think three thoughts. Um, ready aim fire is always better than ready fire aim. But businesses who want to react, want to execute, tend to... Uh, break out of the starting blocks before the firing gun. Yeah. So it's always better to spend time at the front being really clear where it is you're trying to get to uh, yeah. in a hurry. My mother used to say to me when I was a kid, the more hurry, the less speed. It's an old, old expression. That's the first thing. The second thing is every big challenge can be broken down into small challenges. And guess what? We're much, much better at doing small challenges than we are at big. So no matter how transformational it is, break it down into bite-sized chunks, you'll be pleasantly surprised how much more people can absorb and more particularly get their arms around what it is you're asking of them. And the third thing is if you have three big priorities, you've at least one too many and possibly two. Right, okay, good. And from an individual perspective, how do you make sure you know what your priorities really are? I mean, like, let's just say, you know, your priorities, for example, how do you, how do you identify where to spend your time and your priorities? Because you could have, as you said, uh, setting the vision, communication, the crisis going on with, or wars going on with the network outage. Um, how do you decide to, spe where do you decide to spend your time? I mean, is it? Well, it? It's interesting. As a practice, I actually sit at the beginning of every quarter with the guy who runs my office for me, and we set out what we call my non-BAU priorities. And essentially what I try and do is, is think about the things that my colleagues mm. aren't currently thinking about because they're rightly thinking about the priority I gave them right. yesterday. So it's trying to be one quarter, one year ahead. What are the evolving themes? Mm. So one of the biggest ones uh, for me in the last year has been around um, the problem of youth engagement. So you might say it's got nothing to do with my business, but I committed to spend 20% of my time, one day a week in 2012, on youth, in, youth engagement. Mm. Why? Very simple reason. If we do not address the challenge of this lost generation, this one million in the UK, five million across Europe, then every business plan, you know that five-year business plan we talked about earlier? Well, that five-year business plan assumes that those young people are active participants in the economy and are consuming our products and services. If we don't address that issue today, I can tell you every single one of us will miss our business plan in the future. So that for me is a good example of that's something that I can do. And the other thing that's really liberating I think for me uh, in the way I lead is everybody around my table on the board can do their job better than I can. So there's no confusion about where I should spend my time. Mm -hmm. What I do is influence, it's a little touch on the tiller, a little support, uh, reaffirmation, but consistency of this is what our purpose is and ensuring that each of the people around the team understands how they can best contribute to doing that. Mm -hmm. But I never ever try to do their job. But what I try to do is look out for them on the basis that if I look a bit further forward, when they have their heads down delivering, then I can make sure that they don't bump into anything. Mm -hmm. So leaders generate leaders, right? And that's exactly what you are doing.